Welcome back to the Costa Show. A few years ago, a group of young American women opened a school in Monrovia called More Than Me Academy, supposedly for vulnerable girls. More Than Me help people to take their hours script, help them go to school to learn better. Because they say I should make our dream come true. My name is Katie Myler, and I'm the founder of More Than Me, and we help some of the world's most vulnerable children get off the street and into school. More Than Me started originally as a scholarship for kids in a slum in Monrovia, Liberia, and then she, in 2013, launched an all-girls academy in central Monrovia. I live in West Point, so I am, like, familiar with majority of the girls' stories. More Than Me have the most vulnerable girls off the street, these girls who have been abused morally, sexually, physically. I think that More Than Me tried and tries to do its best. These things that happen are really bad and really hideous. I was afraid, but I just have to do it. He said, if I don't do it, I will not go on a scholarship. And he said, Katie, bring in plenty of things that we made our life change. So I should not lose my opportunity. It was a tight group of people who truthfully, truthfully believe they're doing something amazing and good who truthfully believe that the institutions in Liberia are so bad that you really can't get worse. So there's nothing that they can do that they don't see as a win for those kids. See what they have to live with. See how young they are for their life to, to have a question mark, I will say it that way. In 2017, ProPublica set out to learn what happened to a group of girls who suffered the very kind of abuse at More Than Me that the charity was established to prevent. What was uncovered has led to a public outcry and to changes in the charity's leadership. This film includes interviews with former students and staff, as well as More Than Me's history in their own words, as told on social media and in promotional videos. She came playing with children. When she come in the community, she dance, she play. While you eating, she will pull him and eat with you. Yes, yeah, she loves people. Katie Myler first visited Liberia shortly after college, interning with an evangelical charity. Katie is not a person that you meet and you forget. And she comes off you as somebody who's very gritty and very authentic. My parents got divorced when I was six years old, and my single mother of three, um, she worked the overnight shift at a Lipton tea factory making minimum wage. There was a lot of drugs and abuse in my family as well. And the way that I escaped a lot of that was I got really involved in community service. Holden Warren was an aspiring filmmaker who met Katie Myler in the early days of More Than Me. She's a preacher, she's an advocate, she's a, she, that's what Katie Myler is. Is she an educator? No, she's none of those things. She doesn't, she's never run a school or done any of that stuff. This crazy thinks that I can love ignorance, hurt, and hate away in the way that I live day to day. I'm gonna dance the world's sadness away. More Than Me was founded in the aftermath of 14 years of conflict, but tore apart Liberian society. Children were forced to fight, and rape was used as a weapon. Welcome to my beautiful country, Liberia. My name is McIntosh M. Johnson. This is West Point. Katie Myler met McIntosh Johnson a few years after the war ended, when he showed her around West Point. At that time, he organized sports for children on the beach. You know, he played with the kids and they'd all gather around. He was out on the streets, he showed me where the kids were. They're sleeping under canoes, walking through the whole place. I met all the prostitutes and they were all like 10, 11, 12, you know, they all kind of knew him and hung around with him. I was not in school at that time, yeah. Before I eat, 
me will use me and give me money before I eat. Actually, I was taking you to be my protector because Magitos fought war before, and most of the boss afraid of him. So they will not come closer to me. When Katie launched More Than Me in Liberia, McIntosh became her partner on the ground. He recruited girls for her scholarship programme and later found students for More Than Me's own school. McIntosh was introduced to me as the Jesus of West Point. It was Katie and McIntosh, an American who's there to get the money and a Liberian who knows what's going on on the streets. And they were that partnership. Giving out scholarships made McIntosh a powerful figure in West Point. He was seen as someone who could transform a girl's life. While McIntosh worked in West Point, Katie raised funds in the US for most of the year. So I was doing everything I could to help that do to help them go to school. I was using MySpace, which was cool back in the day. And I was telling their stories and people were wiring me money to Liberia. More Than Me posted fundraising videos featuring the girls, but also named at least one of them as a child sex worker and showed her face. And by the time that Abigail was 11 years old, she was a prostitute. While visiting Liberia, Katie blogged about sleepovers with the girls and sometimes took them to parties. There were definitely things that I found concerning. I've seen Katie show up to a pool party in Liberia at midnight with little Liberian children from West Point on a motorbike. Pool parties in Monrovia can be quite debaucherous. And so there's like no reason for a child to be there at all, especially without their parent. I think people would see things like that, things that you wouldn't really accept in any other country. And I think people were suspicious of Katie. But then you'd see her do something so breakout amazing we did it! that you kind of had to support her. Katie is a full result. Katie knows how to talk. She knows how to make her stories and get people attention and get money. But if she really wants to be a great education expert, then I will advise her that she can go to school and know something about education. Katie raised increasing sums of money through online contests and clicktivism campaigns. Give me five minutes to open this envelope. Those online votes were valuable. More Than Me Foundation. In 2012, More Than Me competed for a million dollar prize from the American Giving Awards, sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase. The charity with the most Facebook votes would win on live TV. Thank you so much for your support. We're here in Liberia, right next to the future school building that we're building. We have a lot of work to do here. With the new funds, Katie Myler set up her own school, the More Than Me Academy, in a war-damaged building that Liberia's president, Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, offered to her rent-free. And this was literally the happiest day of my life. Okay. The fanfare of the opening day gave way to a hopeful, if chaotic, first school year. More Than Me students would be taught, in part, by international volunteers who were asked to raise $10,000 to participate. And I don't think a lot of them were actually teachers, were actually trained teachers. More Than Me is at an incredible stage of its own organizational development. Um, it has come so far from when Katie's dream started in 2009. You own your job. There's no director, there's no manager, there's no person. You do what your heart is telling you to do. There was an ignorance around how badly things could go if the right structures, governance weren't in place. There was this case be there. Mm. I've been receiving tons of messages. There's talk of sexual, systematic sexual abuse. It has been discovered that 10 of these girls, these vulnerable girls who are attending this school, More Than Me Academy, ages uh, 12 to 16, have complained of being repeatedly raped by a man named Markintosh Johnson. Hello, Michelle. 
Michelle Spader didn't go on camera, but she spoke extensively on Skype. I applied for the job and when I first met Katie, you know, I was excited by opening a school and introducing policy. Michelle Spader recruited Iris Martor to be the first school nurse. Iris was later promoted to program manager. I realised that most of the children, even though they were very young, but they were sexually active. Because a lot of them were coming to the clinic with SDR, signs and symptoms of SDR. Iris first learned of sexual abuse at More Than Me when a student came to the school clinic. I said, tell me the truth, are you having sex? She didn't want to say, but I could tell from her face that the answer was yes. I said, well, when she told me Macintosh, I just did it. I just went off. I said, how long has this been going for? It was like two years. Two years. So it means she was 30. In two years, so it means she was like 11 when it started. I said, okay, they are treated her. I gave her the drugs, but I was too trouble. I couldn't tell Michelle that this child is having sex and she said Macintosh is responsible. Why? Because that very day Macintosh just told me that she, he and Katie had a relationship. Katie Myler says her romantic relationship had ended three years earlier, but they remained very close. The personal relationship there kind of created this problem where people felt like they couldn't speak up, students and staff members. So then it was a few months actually until... I told Michelle. Until Michelle. Yes. In those five intervening months, two more students were raped for the first time. I didn't say it all the very minute yeah. I knew because I was between this season. Will she choose these girls over her relationship? Or will she choose her relationship over this girl? I could lose my job. Michelle Spader started talking to students. Michelle quickly learned that Macintosh had been repeatedly raping numerous girls, potentially dozens of them. It was terrible, but in every way. The organization, like, hinged on him. You know, this is not a teacher, you know, or someone who's worked for the organization for six months. Yeah, this is someone who has been integral. Chid Liberty is a Liberian-American entrepreneur who joins More Than Me's board. We thought the risk was, do 100 girls go to school or do 1,000 or do 10,000? We never really thought about, do we set up an institution that effectively rapes children? More Than Me's board at the time consisted largely of American entrepreneurs and marketing specialists with no experience running a school. This has been a great pleasure to bring you this new collection. My name is Saul Garlick and I'm the CEO of Think Impact. Hi, I'm Skip Borghese and I am the host for Perlier. I was shocked that no board member saw any way that anybody in our organization, except for Macintosh, was in any way responsible for what happened. Michelle Spader reported the case to police, and in the following days, students and staff gave interviews to the authorities. The first day of my school, one school out. Then he called me in the bathroom. Then he went and locked the door. My whole body was hurting, and my vagina was hurting, and I did not see blood. He said that if I tell my grandmother, then something will happen to me. The same day he beat me is the same day he promised to help me with food anytime I'm hungry. He never used condom that day. He went to it until I got pregnant. When I told him, he said I should take it out. And I said, I don't want to die. He then said, if you don't take out the belly, he will take me from the scholarship and say he don't know me. On June the 16th, 2014, Macintosh Johnson was arrested and taken to jail. More Than Me moved most of the girls who accused him to a safe house for their own protection. The day after the arrest, Katie Myler took the stage in New York. I got a phone call, like, oh my God, oh my God. She was that day or the following day going to speak to the Forbes 400. 
and you're basically giving a, a speech to 400 of the wealthiest people in the world. I fixed this building up um, with our team, and we, and the building is now, this building, we now have the, the best school in Liberia. She said, Macintosh has raped some of the girls, and it's really bad. I think she might have said it was like a third of the girls or every girl over the age of 11 or something like that. My reaction was like, yeah, that is really uh, just, just chilling. And, you know, Warren Buffett got down and proposed to her on one knee because he's so smitten with this beautiful story that he's just heard about these children being saved from sexual exploitation. How did it make you feel when McIntosh Johnson ends up arrested and accused of the rape of as many as 30 girls? I don't know. It was one of those things where you were like, ah, that's not surprising, all of a sudden. And all of a sudden, you're like, and you remember, oh, yeah, we did. We asked him about that, and, you know, and it didn't, and... In fact, long before the school was built, there were rumours about McIntosh Johnson and young girls. And I called it Oshikeri, McIntosh's first wife, accused McIntosh of sleeping with the girls. Michelle Spader gave a similar account when she first reported McIntosh. Katie said, you know, that she looked into it and talked to all the parties and that, you know, nothing was founded. But she did say to me in that moment, like, basically, like, it wouldn't surprise me. There was one point where we, we did confront him. And because we had heard rumors, I believe it was from his ex-wife, that she said that he was, you know, that he was into young, uh, small girls. And so we confronted him. We sat him down. I think I have video of it back somewhere. And we asked him about it, and he swore up and down that it wasn't true, and what could we have, you know, could... And, and I don't know, like, I didn't run the school. I was just a filmmaker, you know? I, there was an issue. We confronted him about it. I don't know how much more I could have done on my end. Holden Warren did not provide the footage for this documentary, saying he'd ask Katie Myler but she doesn't see how it would be in her interest. In a meeting at a Manhattan public relations firm where no cameras were allowed, More Than Me's board vigorously denied that Katie was ever cautioned about McIntosh having sexual contact with children. So it wasn't that I was warned as I asked his first, not the, his first wife, but the mother of his child, why did you end this relationship? And her comment to me was something along the lines of like, he spends too much of his time with the children and she mentioned something about one of the students being even at the house. I was not, something about the way she said it made me uncomfortable, but it was never explicit. I did come back to ask, do you think that Macintosh is a good man? Like getting a character reference from her. And she said, absolutely, that Macintosh helps kids, that he's a great man. And she confirmed that he would never abuse kids. Board members say they were never told about the rumors from years before. If you want to know if we had any idea that that monster was doing the things that he was doing to those children, your sources are wrong. You are wrong. And if you print that and if you imply that, you are so misguided and so misinformed, you have a major problem coming to you. We had no idea. In her statement to police, Michelle Spader also recalled a visit she made to McIntosh Johnson's home in West Point. When I gave my statement, I'm trying to rack my brain for, I mean, did we miss something, right? Did I miss something? So, knocked on the door. When McIntosh did come to the door, he like just had a pair of shorts on. And there, you know, were a bunch of students who were in the room. And I, honestly, my first reaction was like, what, you know, what the hell is going on in that room? You know, I, I remember feeling like something is wrong here. But then McIntosh's wife and his daughter like walked out behind them and, and you know, McIntosh and said, oh, we were all just napping. And to me, looking back, I mean, their testimonies talk about multiple girls on a bed being raped and his wife in the room and his daughter in the room. And then now fully believe that that was happening at that time. The rapes and their aftermath upended the lives of the young victims but the crisis within More Than Me would soon be overshadowed. An international health crisis unprecedented in modern times. Ebola, ground zero, Liberia. Ebola would change the face of Liberia and More Than Me. 
as he's placed in the ambulance, anxious eyes take notice. Watching too is Katie Myler, an American charity worker from New Jersey. This is her organization's own ambulance, bought when it was clear Liberia's healthcare system was collapsing. We watched the horrors unfold on Katie's Instagram. If there is a hell, this is what it was. Time even featured her incredible work in their Person of the Year issue. Iris Martor shared the same honour for her work in West Point. Holden Warren filmed Katie Myler as she tried to cheer up children sick with Ebola. and your pa, they're watching you. They're watching you from heaven. You getting me? They love you so much. Ebola brought international attention and funding to more than me's work. The charity's revenue tripled to nearly $3 million. After the epidemic ended, McIntosh Johnson's trial finally began. 10 girls testified their identities hidden from the court. In the end, prosecutors never called Michelle Spader or Katie Myler to the stand. Without any of the Americans testifying, it was the girl's word against McIntosh. The defense claimed they had conspired to lie about the rapes. Many jurors believed it. The jury hung eight to four, just short of McIntosh Johnson going free. One of, the, one of the biggest challenges is sexual exploitation, right? Even at More Than Me Academy, we had a rape. Uh, we had a staff member who uh, had raped, raped kids, and uh, that happened in the very first year of the school, and when we found out, we threw him in jail, and he, he ended up dying in jail. But there's more to the story. McIntosh Johnson had AIDS when he died. After he was arrested, I heard rumors that he's sick, he's sick, he's sick, he's sick. Although nearly a quarter of more than me students have been identified as possible victims, the charity only tested the trial witnesses. More than me says all the students had access to free medical treatment and that HIV awareness was part of their education programme. Did the school make sure that all the girls in the school were tested, bearing in mind that Johnson had contact with a number of different people? No. Do you know why not? I don't know why. Among the girls named as possible victims, at least three later tested positive for HIV. Board members say they were never told at the time that McIntosh had AIDS. I had no idea because I've never seen any ounce of proof of what he died of. That is a fact. I have no to idea what he died of. this day we don't have, know that. Family, I, I doubt it. Let me be super clear. It's not my business what he died of. It took only a quick visit to a government official and a couple of emails to confirm that McIntosh had AIDS. The, the organisation is our fourth year. They decided to help. Maybe initially their intention was, was, was pure, but the person who you use to do the recruitment, if the person did anything wrong, you are held responsible. I think anywhere else in the world, everybody involved would be in some way held to account. Including you? Yeah. And the board member? Absolutely. Absolutely. After McIntosh Johnson died, more than me closed the safe house. Most girls remained outside West Point. More than me continued to pay their school fees. All but one. She was no longer in school and selling herself online to survive. I think if I change and pay attention to more than me, I will be one or one person that will make my family to come up. But actually, after that, after the case, I just feel discouraged because they stop coming to me. Yeah, they can pay attention if I call them. No way if I go on the campus, they will not pay attention to me. My whole, <laughs> my whole life looking upside down. I don't want to say anything about my life.
if I told you that, and that I met one of the students, and that she wishes that she'd never gone forward in the case, because at least Johnson looked after her, Damn. and now there's no one to look after her, how would that make you feel? I mean, terrible. I mean, I mean, that means that we have failed these young women who had such strength to come forward. I don't think there's this deep sense of responsibility from the organization that, you know, you, you owe these girls something for what they went through. I, I don't believe that that's there. I think that it should be. You know, a lot of times people come from outside and they don't estimate the power of Liberians. They think that we are all stupid people with little or no education and our system is fragile and they can get away because their skin is white. But it's not true. Iris left More Than Me in 2017, but the charity star has continued to rise. More Than Me now runs 18 public schools through a government programme and has plans to expand. We have a big dream of reaching 500 schools in the next four years, but we can't do this without you. We live and breathe for these children. Chid Liberty left the board in early 2015, but continues to work in Liberia. I believe that race plays a very important role in this story. There's no way that any serious person can look at everything that's happened with More Than Me and not at least put the racial lens on to explain how this many children could be abused and a whole group of people who were supposed to be responsible for it just kind of were like, well, we did the good part, but like the abuse part, that wasn't us. Skip Borghese has resigned as board chair. Katie Myler has temporarily stepped aside while Liberian officials reinvestigate the charity's handling of the rape cases. The charity says that in the years since McIntosh Johnson's arrest, they have introduced rigorous child protection policies and increased staff training. More Than Me says it currently has some 4,000 students in its care. The customer for More Than Me is not the children. Our customer is the donor. And our customer has no idea what's going on with the kids in Liberia, nor do they really care. What makes our customer feel good is to get a video, to get a link, to read a website, to go to a party, and to say, I support Katie Myler. Do you know Katie? Oh, I know Katie. And so as long as the beneficiary is separate from the customer, at the end of the day, what else is the customer getting but a story? 